Nice one. Welcome, Jack. Thanks, Jonner. Ireland's hardest working comedian. <laughs> I think I might be. And I, I love the way you have the, the wall full of medals, which aren't yours. I own one of them. Do you own one of yeah, them yeah. hidden there and, somewhere? And that's why I brought it to the front. Oh, is it the front, is it? The big one. No, the, big well one. the bronze. You deserve all those medals. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, heart, yeah. Oh my God. So okay. So what time is it right now? As we speak, it's uh, twenty to seven, and so at uh, six o'clock they just announced that it, we can't have more than fifty people. Or sorry, more than six people now indoors. Restaurants can keep going. Uh, pubs can keep going, but I just because um, yeah, because you know me, like I never, I never give up. I was always oh. trying, even in the massive lockdown, we, where we couldn't go anywhere. I was trying to do sketches in me gaff. I uh, I did a river dance sketch where I got like I, I found bits of goalpost out the back of my garden and stuck them together. And uh, I've seen I, the body coach one. That was good. The, the body the coach one. Out. Yeah, yeah. The old bollocks hanging. The old knobber. <laughs> and oh, if anybody wants to know how to make a, a good knob, uh, they're a pair of tights, right? <laughs> a leg of a tights with more tights in it. And the more tights in it, give you the veins. <laughs> And so it, it cost nothing, cost nothing. So I had to do, because as you see, years, years ago, I used to make my own props anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. out of Benton. Yeah. So in the lockdown, I was doing that. And the mad thing is about comics, right, is that they're on their own a lot anyway. Now, we have families and children, but we travel a lot. Yeah. And you're in the hotel on your own, and you're backstage on your own. And when you're about to go on stage, you're on your own. So the COVID was just another being on our own, right? Except this time we weren't making money. <laughs> yeah, we get paid to be on our own normally, but this time we weren't getting paid to be on our own. So I was right. I said, right, I'll try. Um, I even did like a little show me toilet. I call it Jason Bourne's Jokes and the Jacks. Did like silly game shows. Um, that wor- that kind of worked out not too bad because I ended up doing a couple of gigs for companies online, right? right? right. Literally, they're sitting there in fate on Zoom and I'm talking away to them doing a gig on me Jacks. And and they're like English and everything. Like, loads of them all going, what, what's it? What is it, Jack? You're on. The, you're with Jack. I was going, no, I'm on me actual flushing the toilet now. So did that. Did the silly sketches. Put up. Uh, did voiceover stuff. Did all that stuff. And then I was thinking, right. Remember when the lockdown eased off a little yes. bit? And I was going, right. We can have. It said you could have up to fifty people in a venue. Yeah. And I was going, right. We'll okay. So I did. Got this gig together in Rat Hot, just here. In, it's called the venue. Yeah. Walked into the venue, wondering if we could use it first. And then there was this little fella called Colin, just sitting in there with all his streaming equipment, which is about half a million worth. I didn't know that. Fuck. I'm like you now. I just think, <laughs> do you not just like press play on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> You can go live on that. Yeah, you could go live. Yeah, go to help. TikTok, Snapchat, too much information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the people just deliver the money to the doorstep because no, you dope. We need this whole system, and we also and we got this brilliant system. We did two gigs, and there was supposed to be another one there on the third of September. So we had um, we had up to nearly a, a, a thousand people each night online. From I, I had a list. I read out the list on stage. Well, could, could you do that without the fifty cons in there? Just with six? No. no. Oh, no, I right. need, I need, that was why it was so amazing. Okay. I needed, I had 44 people in there because the rest had to be staff. Yes. That's how mental it is. Yeah. And um, we were the first, I was the first comic, as far as I know now, we've, pre- we've got this pretty locked down, first comic to do a gig indoors in front of a crowd and stream it live in the world. So like, that's hard working, John, yeah, isn't it? Right. That's what I'm pushing it now. No messing. So no we messing did that. Yeah. So I was getting going and thought, right, okay, we can get get a bit going there, you know, getting on that. But then now the government have just announced that we can't do it anymore. Oh my gosh. I know. Oh and this is it, isn't it? Because, they, you know, if they sat into my venue where I was in Ratote, I had 44 people socially distanced uh, watching me gig, but they're not allowed to move around the room because they're watching me. They're sitting watching me and they're with and there was only four to a table which were and I was going around asking them are you where are you are they are all from the same place of course because they're all from the same family <laughs> so it's safer than a pub and yeah. safer than a restaurant and there's so many musicians and uh, and uh, comics and all that, that and actors and all that could do with 44 people in a room they could easily do their, yeah, their craft yeah. Yeah. and stream it like I am so now we're back to we're back to bollock and one and I, I was trying to start up a uh, Patreon Trying to find a solution. Well, this is what I'm always doing. Mm-hmm. So what I've done is uh, I've got, I'm going to just keep trying to push the gigs in the jacks. Doing yeah. the, like the other night I did a gig to nearly a thousand people online uh, for the National Grid, which is the British ESB. Whopper. <laughs> you know, Whopper. So I was doing that going, this is fucking mad. But 
it yeah it i mean that's the way to go i it, see i'm i'm as well i'm 48 now as well and existing on lines a pain the hole because mm. i can't i have to keep posting shit now yeah and then i have like a funny video or a funny thing like you know what i mean yeah that's what your our kids do john yes our kids post up all the time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I found like, like oh, what the fuck do they want? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You put up different posts. Do you think it's funny? They don't. You put up something that's not that funny. They fucking love it. <laughs> I put a picture of me last night lying on a mattress in Edinburgh outside. The fucking thing went whap, fucking viral. Do you know what I mean? I do a sketch that takes me three days. They're like, yeah, it's all right. But you see that uh, Vines and them other fucking things. Max shows me these things and I'm just yeah. like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like I'm like when my outflow was like and I was younger and my outflow I'm just looking at him going in my head just going fucking EJ <laughs> fucking dope <laughs> head he's like he's falling around the place and I'm looking at this thing going mm. eh, what am I supposed to be looking at here yeah just, they, they I don't, know but they think it's hilarious some kind of stapling a sandwich to his flute or something like that it's something ridiculous yeah, yeah. Like. <laughs> and, but but we're right john right when we say it's not funny we're fucking definitely it's not funny there yeah. are a lot of them are laughing at it because they have to like my kids are laughing at uh, uh this guy his head coming up and going <laughs> like that and they're going hey and they're all laughing together but i'm looking at them all going none of you thinks this is fucking funny yeah. and anyway so the, all that exists in that stuff trying to get and and because there's no income do you know what i mean so this is what got cancelled was the whole Australian tour got cancelled. That's like seven weeks of massive work around Australia. Yeah. Right now, I should be in Edinburgh doing what's my main earning for the year for four How weeks. How many years have you done there? 20? 25. Fuck. Tw yeah. Savage. So like this would have been 26 or whatever. Um, so that had to go. And then the British tour, that's all gone as well. And then, you know, you'll hear this phrase everywhere, you know, oh, well, look, you know, it's terrible, but we're all in the same boat. But we're not. No, we're, we're not. all in different fucking boats. <laughs> no. We're not. Nobody's in the same fucking boat no. as me. And no. I love as well, you'll love this. Actually, uh, we were on doing a Zoom call and um, there was uh, one of the one of the girls in Zoom call is a, is a nurse in James's, right? Mm. And then one of the other lads, another partner, he's a Sparks, right? right. And he was going, hey, you and me, what? You and me, Susan. We're like front line, front line, right? <laughs> front line. Now listen, right? And no, and no offense to you, John, right? If you're a Sparks, you're not a front line no, worker, right? That's no. like, you know, when you watch Game of Thrones or Braveheart. Yeah. The front line workers who are the, that's why it's called front line. Because yeah. you're in the, in the shit, <laughs> in the front. That's where the nurses are, right? And they're the ones that fucking leg it at the horses with the spears. <laughs> and you know who the electricians are? You're the fuckers at the back, which are archers. Yeah. That's who you <laughs> are. And it's because electricians... Fire <laughs> and you go Whoosh! and you don't even move and then they're going what's going on yeah we're in the front line right up against it no but so we were, we were slagging him big time going no you're not I, you're miles away i had a piece of paper driving around this was like lockdown i had to go up yeah. to dundalk it was like i drove to dundalk i probably seen 10 vehicles jesus and i, I like it had this like piece of paper i was getting stopped checkpoints showing the guards going like, oh, what yeah but like my ego, I wasn't fucking front line. I'm not fucking mouth to mouth trying to fucking save some content. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. No, uh, but you, but you know, people need fuses, John. No, well done, John. That's fucked. You're fucking fair play to you. Fair play to all of you. We're so proud of you. No, but like, uh, so, but the the thing is with the cunts in the supermarkets are front line. Yeah. Beep. Well, beep, well, you beep. know, well, they're near, you know what they are? Try not to dig the head off moany cunts. But, Jesus fuck! People need to calm down. But here's the thing: how many of them have died? The, the money fucks. No, no. The they, cunts in the supermarkets, zero. Uh, I don't. How think many people them. are they mixing with a day? L loads. Yeah, fifty people can't go to a gig. Yeah, I know. But there's hundreds of people going. Beep. I don't. Beep, it's beep. there's no sense to it at I'll all. I just scanned that for your Mary. Yeah. Do you see the way like um, New Zealand have been dealing with? What's her name? Uh, Jacinda. Yes. The way she just went. There's a COVID case. Right. Close the whole country down. Shut up. Nobody move. Yeah. Wait. It's gone, right? Everybody back again. Yeah. As opposed to we're doing it in bits and things and not too sure. Close yeah. down. But the suit, yeah, the supermarket. I mean, the gigging is really frustrating for us. Yeah. And like, you see, the thing is as well is people think uh, oh, it's only entertainment. But entertainment brings in massive taxes. Oh, man. Huge money we pay. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? 100%. Like, it's, um, I'm probably sometimes, I mean, I'd be making more than a heart surgeon. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're going to, do you not just. I'm a comedian. They, I'm yeah, front line. People still <laughs> ask me. I'm like, do I have another job? What else do you do? <laughs> and I go, no, this is fucking hell. But if I needed a, a um, if, I, if I, I think if I wanted to write a book after all this about because uh, I have a podcast called Mind Your Loaf, right? And if I wanted to write, write a book called um, How to Mind Your Loaf, uh, not just in COVID, 
But what happened to me was I uh, was separated after 20 years of marriage. Uh, my dad dies. Uh, my father-in-law dies. Like two brilliant fellas, right? And yeah, the separation. And then uh, and then my whole career goes down the drain. We have no gigs or nothing or anything yeah. like that. And instead of sticking my head underneath a pillow and going, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, I, just went, I just went the other way. I just thought like, you know, you know, because you and me, we hate the money folks. No. Do you know what I mean? You got to keep going. You're so I had to. You're not a victim. That's why you have that mentality. It's no. like, okay, how am I going to fucking, you're walking out. Well, Even your brain is there at the moment going, okay, six cunts, I'm going to fucking, yeah. you can see the fucking cogs and six cunts, I'm going to fucking, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the Irish spirit. Yeah, it is. Mm. And, 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 and do you know what? I was going to do one of those, I did a sketch to the uh, ages, I, 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 Call it. Um, he's like a, he says gobshites to everybody, and he did a thing called Irish government gobshites. It's I put my hood up, and I write whatever the character is on my head. It's always the same dress, but I just thought I'd do a thing for the whole world, like to just go like because we because a lot of us are dealing with mental health, and we're all going. It's okay, you'll be all right. But now and again, we need a kick in the hole as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I yeah. think I'd love to do a kick in the hole, little minute yeah. piece of going get out of bed at eight o'clock. Don't be lying around the bed. Stop fucking moaning, right? Yeah. The moaning's not going to help. No. The, you know, get moving. Walk, run, do your dog stuff. Doesn't matter. Ride, do something. <laughs> Just get moving, right? Okay. Yeah. And and as well as that, your diet. Do you know what I mean? This is fucking hilarious, isn't and it? And are you surrounded by moany cunts? Yeah. Get rid of the moany cunts. <laughs> Mind your tribe. Yeah, Mind yeah. the tribe around you. Oh, jeez. I tell you, you and me, John, right? In our past, we've been we've been surrounded by some moany cunts, all right? <laughs> it's, it's about, it's about, um, like there's certain people, my philosophy on it is there's certain people that are kind of blood related and they're mm. moany cunts, but yeah. you can't go, you know what? Fuck off. No, you can't get rid of them. But you can manage them. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's how you manage you. Exactly. But the other ones that it's kind of, I look at people and go, is the juice worth the squeeze? Oh, no. Yeah. Say it. Yeah. You know, you yeah. have to be like that's that. That's a great phrase. You have to be like that. And, and, um, yeah, so with the mind your love thing, actually, what what happened was because it's all it's grand, it's all blending in. Was the the mind your love podcast I did for like because I was th- I was thinking about uh, actually heading back to to college or university and doing like a, a degree yeah in psychology or philosophy or fucking something like that, right? And then I just went. Um, I met a guy in Edinburgh this time last year, nearly this to this day, and he says, "No, nah, don't do that." He says, "Just he says I'll give you like eleven books." Like I've over my over my twenty years of experience, because he's a forensic mind reader. Deadly. Colin Clouds, his name. He's, mm. He does. He, he's in the entertainment business now, but he was. That he was a forensic profiler. Right. Like when he was about twenty six, he was working for the cops in Four. Scotland, sitting across murders and everything, telling the cops if they were lying, if he thought they were lying or not. So he can do that. He's brilliant at that. Mm. So he gave me these books. I've been reading through all about you know cognitive behavior and uh, profiling and just uh, mindfulness and everything. And they've been a great help. So I started that mind your love thing because I thought, okay, so I can't be asked going to university or whatever. I'll bring everybody to me. I'll bring all the experts and teachers gift to myself. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I did. And I, I've it, it's so it's not. I don't. I don't grill the guests on Mind Your Love. I ask them like children's questions almost. Yeah. I'm like, oh, do you know what? Because we had a guy on who was a neuroscientist. Obviously a fellow who tell like all about your brain, the subconscious, the how your brain actually works. And it was just, you want to hear, you can have a listen to that. Um, it, uh, uh, what was Paul Moore was his name? And it was so funny because he was just, he realized how thick I was fairly quick. <laughs> <laughs> and he was going, well, you know your eyes, Jason. <laughs> he went to that. And then one of my best, he went, you know your eyes, um, you know when they see something, they don't see it straight away. And I went, well, well of course they do. They're your eyes. He goes, no. And I went, so they go to your brain? He goes, no, they're not connected to your brain. I went, your eyes are connected. I'm saying, I'm telling the neuroscientists. I'm going, your eyes are connected to your brain. He goes, they're not. He goes, your eyes go down into your spinal column, into the nervous system, and back up into your brain that fast. Yeah. And your brain, this is why I was going, yeah, shut up. He goes, your brain kind of works out what it thinks your eyes have seen. That's a bit frightening, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So you don't know what, so... Your, so your eyes... I'm worried about that getting cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that gets cut. Yeah. Like, it's fucked me hard. I don't get shot in the yeah. fucking thing that links me eyes. That's why you're like, yeah, when you look at something, you have to look twice at it. <laughs> Did I see that? No. What? Look at it again. Yeah. So all of them, and then the one thing he told me was that uh, smell is the only thing connected to your brain directly. I only know that because I listen to Paul. So anyway, 
Damn, I'll have to learn something there. So my head was fried, <clears throat> wrecked. I mean, it was it, but it's better now. And I started uh, uh, training with you yeah. ages ago. Ages so thanks ago. for that. Because I, was, I needed a trainer or whatever. And I remember starting with you. And training, st- I'd say I'd say uh, the running I do now, and I did a bit of training, Just I just did some body shit online and got Damn. people to join in. Gift. Stuff I'd learned from you and Adrian yeah, yeah. and everybody. Gift. And... Uh, but that, if anybody asks me what's the number one thing that keeps me happy is is moving. Yeah. I, I mean, never mind me, mind your loaves, me gigs or whatever, but the running and the fucking moving. And I know you do. Everything the seems to, but I do a few different things. Like I, and I think like the way you are, it's, it's like you're running at the moment, but I know if you can't run or serious injury or whatever, you're going to do something else yeah. because it becomes part of like when I train or whatever I do, jiu-jitsu or swim in the sea, all my problems become kind of clearer after I train mm. and they don't become so big, they become smaller. Do you know? So They're not we, as serious like. No. I mean, y- 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 yeah, I would, uh, I would, I would have the mentality where I go, I need to go for a run now. Yeah. Like, I'd, my head be fried. Like, cause it was only the other day, actually, when I was trying to sort out all sorts of different gigs and everything. And I just went, like, and my brain, I could feel my brain starting to just go, you know, thing. But we don't let it go yeah. all the way like that. Because we know, because I've learned from my therapist, because I, I was in therapy, which good. was the best crack ever. Oh, my God. Everybody has to go to therapy. Yeah. It is so good. It, you don't know how... Um, how much trouble you're in until you sit in front of a really good therapist. And yeah. then they, and m- my favorite thing, I went to about th- three, three of them. Got that third one was the one who worked out. M- my dad calls that window shopping. Yeah, right. So my dad has a therapist, yeah. but he's on his fourth one. He lives yeah. around the corner. He went to, if you, my dad suffered with depression mm. and he was in James's a couple of times, but he, he goes, oh, first time to, to your man that he goes to now, they're yeah. like mates. Yeah. And, and he goes to your man now, Brian Kelly is his name, and uh, he goes to your man and he goes, oh, yeah, I didn't think it worked the first few times. He goes, and the terrorist goes, yeah, you were just window shopping yeah. until you find what you're after. And then... They've got to fit your personality. Yeah. Do you know what 100%, I mean? 100%, yeah. And so mine was, uh, I was yeah, in and out, and then we got this <coughs> great woman, Berna, in, um, and she she was just, she got me straight away. Because she, she's this beautiful, elegant woman. And uh, she's she was a, a professor in Trinity and everything like that. So she kind of retired. She's semi-retired. Like so, so I just about got in there. But just some of the stuff she was telling me, like, and it's great in therapy. One of the things she said to me, because I was like, te- like you know, because I'm like, I'm a mouthpiece in yeah. there. Like I don't care. I don't have any. It's not that I don't have any respect for authority, but I don't recognize authority. Yes. I don't. I don't call a priest by. I call him by his name. Yeah, Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And a doctor, I call him by his name. Yeah. And same with this, like yeah. the therapists don't go, oh yes, miss, or whatever, or go fucking <laughs> unless she's got a whip and suspenders. <laughs> <laughs> but I go, yes, miss, yeah. whip the problems out of me. Go on. <laughs> Stick that up my hoop. Is that normal? <laughs> anyway, she was sitting there and then uh, she was going, um, so, so I remember at the, at one of the near near the end, she goes, Now you know uh, all your shit that you bring here, she says to me, right? And I go, I love this woman. She goes, and this is with all of our this is a good one for everybody. She got with therapy because I never knew what it was. I thought you go in and they cure you. Yeah, yeah. I thought you get cured yeah. and you come out going, oh, no problems. That's yeah, brilliant. Yeah. But uh, she came in. I went in and she goes, I'm going to teach you how to sit in your own shit is what she taught me, which was brilliant. So yeah. all my problems with, you know, splitting up my marriage, worrying about my kids, the, the finances now with all of this, like what am I going to do? What, where's my work going to be? All that all that shit doesn't go away. It all stays there. Yeah. But it's how you deal with it. Yeah. So she just said, I'm going to teach you how to sit in your own shit and deal with it, which was great. And then the, and this is when I cried laughing. This one was about to go. She went, oh yeah, oh by the way, Jason, see all this shit you brought in here? Make sure you pack it up and take it with you. She goes, <laughs> <laughs> don't be leaving that beside behind me. So the therapy was brilliant. The mind or loaf is great. I mean, like, and there's, oh yeah, just to say as well, that's a website that I work for yes. that's on it, which is called Torn to Me. Yes. T U R N number number two the number two and then dolly E. And that's free counseling online for people. Yeah. And there's a peer thing in there so people can join in and, and like a group support. Yeah, thing you can do like anonymous thing. You don't have to put your name in. Yeah. And um yeah, I joined it to see how it worked to put my name and my picture in. So that didn't work out. 
Jason Wood comedian. I'm gonna be like that. Anonymous. Anonymous. What's up? Doing anonymous, McKenny. Some pricks on pretending he's Jason Bourne. So all I mean, it, it's like what I say to people, and like, like, um, and then people, people are saying to me like, "Oh, you're all right, like you know what I mean. You're like you, you're a comedian. You can do this stuff online. You can." T-. But everybody's walk of life. You can all, everybody can change gears in the life that they're in and yes. get work somewhere else or do yeah. something somewhere else. Yeah. Like, um, the other biggest thing I've been doing, which is coming out, and we did this just before COVID, was, uh, which is kind of a thing where you nearly be kicking yourself after 25 years of work, is an app that I've uh, uh, started up with two other guys. Uh, Brennan Morrissey, who's an entrepreneur. This dude, I never met an entrepreneur. I right. didn't really know what that was. Thought it was a guy who flew planes <laughs> in the uh, in nineteen twenties. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur. He's <laughs> got a big mustache and fucking yeah, scarf. The scarf with the fucking coat. Langer. <laughs> with the glasses. <laughs> so it wasn't him. For a dog. That's not, that's not what they do. <laughs> and I went, all oh, right. So okay. So they just put they they build. So he's really good into tech. So I laugh is the app called I laugh. Right. Which we're going to be launching now in about two weeks, Give which is like TikTok and like Instagram. Whopper. Now it's like way bigger than I even thought it was. Like it was going, this is fucking amazing. So, um, and, and so what I did with my tribe thing during like when the breakdown happened, I got me therapist sort of. I mean, like all like the mates that I like that are really good for me around me. Um, I started the mind your loaf, and then I met. I said I'm going to meet these uh pe- they, like. It, let's say you have like six millionaire friends and you're not a millionaire. Yes. You will be a millionaire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You will be because yeah, no. you're, you, if you have nobody else, they're going to, you're going to do what they do and yeah. move like they do and eventually you'll go, well, my, what? But, uh, but this is not about money. This is about, I I like to myself with people who like to get the shit done. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. Brendan was an entrepreneur. I said, I said, I'd like to do an app and that's as far as, that's as far as it came out of my mouth and then he then lifts it and started going and I've just been going with him. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, and then I and then I was doing a gig <laughs> in Newcastle, and uh, it was a Christmas gig. And uh, afterwards, I was just had great crack. It was a corporate, just messing with them. And then this guy called Bradley Groves. I met him, and he was the head of the company in his jeans in Newcastle. Everybody like loving him. All his staff. Thanks, Bradley. Whoa, great night. You're brilliant. Thanks for getting Jason. Right. And he didn't. You know, <laughs> his son was the booker. Right. Got me in and everything. And then Bradley turned out. Bradley is. Uh, one of the top entrepreneurs in Britain he used to own phones for you, which was uh, right. yeah, two fellas used to own that him and his mate. And then I was over there. Uh, he called me back over, fly back over to sit in his office, and for no reason, just to sit with him. And he tells me, he told me all about what he does and everything. And his dad was a miner and how he's made his millions. And he could have re- he could have retired at twenty four years of age, Fuck. and he just doesn't want to. Like he doesn't like. He's not money, you see. He's he, yeah. he likes get. He just likes doing shit. I wouldn't like to retire. No. I fucking, it'd be fucking horrendous. I, it'd my, be horrendous. My dad died, died. He's still dead. Sorry. Mm-hmm. My dad, he retired at 55. Fuck. Now, you have to be that type of person. And my Fuck. dad was that type of person. Yeah. He retired at 55 and did nothing. And he didn't mind doing nothing. Fuck. I was going, Dad, you going to do anything? He goes, no. We played a bit of golf. Yeah. Walked, went up to the pub. Walked around the parks a bit. But like my dad, like like this is the other thing about our dads. So I'm going, mind your loaf, therapy, yeah. running, everything. And while my dad was alive, he's only de- he's dead. The 24th of February he died. So yeah. what are we now? J- j- August. So uh, hang on, March, April, May, June, July, uh, nearly five months. So where I'm running around doing all the things, and uh, and his his therapy was standing up out of his chair in the living room and walking out to a shed. A little bit of whiskey, his radio, <laughs> and a fag, and his little his, his cap, and he had uh, the super serves everywhere. He had two of them yeah. going that weren't new, so we took ages to to get them going. And I, it, my dad t- took a he. You know what my dad reminded me of? If you everybody watches uh, Lord of the Rings, do you remember the Lord of the Rings? Remember the trees, the big old trees yes. that fought. Yes, but they took fucking ages to say anything and do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So the they two little hobbits. Around. Yeah, they got. What are we gonna do now? And they go, we're trees. Yeah, yeah. it takes a while yeah. for us to talk. <laughs> That's my dad. So my dad just sat there. I used to say my dad's heart. You know, it beat it twice a year. Paddy Bourne, <laughs> and he used to, like. He, I, and then I'm looking at him, you know, and 
you know, because during this COVID, people are going, you'll be good to, you know, make your banana bread, do your exercise, get moving. But that's like you and me. Yeah, yeah That's yeah. what we like doing. Yes. But there was plenty of other people who just sat and read and yeah. didn't do anything. Yeah. And my dad would, my dad died a week before this fucking COVID thing happened. Yeah. And he wouldn't have changed at all. There wouldn't, nothing would have changed for him. You're kind of lucky that, not that he died, but that he didn't die in the bollocks and your ma wouldn't be able to get a proper goodbye and he was in the hospital and only fucking 10 cunts including the priest in the church and all yeah. that bollocks that they went down with. You'd be, that would be fucking, I'd be traumatised. Well, it, it, this was what, ha yeah, so I always say my dad was a jammy bastard since he was born. Yeah. So my dad, here's a quick summary. My dad's born, right? He is this, he has seven sisters older than him. So he doesn't lift an iron, oh, he doesn't cook, he doesn't do anything. <laughs> he is then his dad, my granddad, walks him into Guinnesses at the age of 15, yeah. walks up to the foreman and goes, this is Paddy, he starts today. The foreman goes, oh, fair play, Paddy, I'll put him on the books. My dad's on the books now. He's now a cooper, yeah. right, apprentice or whatever, making a good few money. He hits about the age of 18 and now he's making barrels yeah. fast. Yes. And so he is now got a motorbike and a car at 15. His sisters and all haven't got anything. They, they, they've still got money it's not that they haven't got anything but he's the one just coming in and out me dad's me granddad's house like having a crack right yeah. and then he then in Guinnesses as well because uh, there was loads of recessions because I remember my dad when the recession hit in 2007 I was in the shed with him going Jesus Christ dad he's like what he's going recession he goes that's me fault recession and he's going <laughs> shut up you you never went through a recession working for Guinnesses because yeah. Guinnesses just looked after them all yeah. the time there was no uh, drop in work or there was no drop in profits or nothing no. just kept them going so we got all that, all that. And then even um, uh, he had everything he had was minor. So we had a minor heart attack when he was 55, right? And he went in and I'll never forget it. He was, yeah, because they said to me, dad said, I don't feel right. I feel a bit weird. And the doctor went, that's because you're sober, Paddy, for the first time since you were 15. Because he would have drank every day yeah, in work. Yeah. In Guinness. Yeah. They got little vouchers yeah. for a couple of points. Yeah, so they, they, they <laughs> didn't think anything of it. No. And then he goes on then and he like, he's, he's, he hit 70. Right. And he starts smoking again, the dope. Right. right. So he'd given up since nearly 20, 15 years of smoking. Right. And then he has a minor stroke. But right. then now he's now he's jammy again because he's only had a stroke that's affected his eyes. So we didn't even know he had a stroke. Right. And he went in. I had to drive him in the car and he was in the car going, well, I suppose I've had a great life now. You know, sure. Fuck it anyway. And I'm going, you're not dying. <laughs> he goes, you know, well, I said, look, you look fine to me. And I'm still talking. <laughs> went in. Couple of days in the hospital, he was fine. Came back out, everything back to normal, like all the way. And then he gets up to eighty years of age. He's just about like his foot is a bit sore or something like that. But my dad's driving, you know, drinking, moving around. Like he doesn't look old. He's got all his hair. It's brown, yeah. right? It's like people, L one's hanging out of it, going, <laughs> "That's not fucking real." He's going, "Shut up! It is fucking real," right? He's looking like Elvis walking around. And uh, so my dad, first of all, he was such a brilliant man. He could never have grown old properly. So if he started using Zimmer frames yeah. and shit, he'd be fucking like so right. someone kill me, yeah. right? Yeah. He goes in, so he has a stroke, right? He has the stroke. Me ma calls me. I'm in me sister's, and he, she says your dad won't get out of bed. So that was a bit of an alarm bell thing, because yeah. you know your me, your mom, I think she was in shock as well. They know. Yeah, she didn't mm. really want to admit it on the phone. Mm -hmm. So I got in there, and he was fully, you know, he had a massive stroke. Right. His whole side of his body and his face. I've never, I've never seen that in front of me. Right. And I, I just kept totally calm, like, and went, so, okay, dad, and it was, ho he could, um, the weird thing is when I've never, I, again, I don't know how, this is me guessing what was happening because I was kind of working out the way he was, what was happening to him, was the whole left side of his body had gone, right, yes. and his, oh, his right eye was gone, and he was grabbing with his right hand. Yes. And it was almost like he was trying to move his whole body yeah. with his right hand. Yeah. It was mad to watch. He was like, I was going, dad, it's okay. And once you held his hand, he wouldn't let go of your hand. So it was really sad, like, you know, yeah. but what happened then, and, and another thing as well, the ambulance driver men in, in Ireland as well, especially, and the, and the girls, Legends. they're fucking hilarious. Yeah. In a situation like that, mm -hmm. they came in and it was brilliant. I go, yeah, I was like in shock, me mads and bits. And I'm going, he's up there, I think he's had a stroke. And they went, oh, well, let's have a look at him. And they go in and they go, oh, Jesus, Paddy, you're bollocks. Look at you. <laughs> Holy Mary, you're all over the camp. And he starts putting stuff on him and they keep yeah. talking to him. And my dad had built a spare a spiral staircase. Right. Because a fellow went around in fucking Guinnesses and was flogging them off for a cheap <laughs> in the 80s. And they were nowhere. 
Next minute, the whole fucking lovely stairs gets ripped out. My ma's crying and it's a fucking spiral yoke of a thing, right? And by the way, my ma fell down twice while holding my little sister and my dad fell down loads when he was hammered, right? So, so when they had the ambulance went up to get him out, they had him strapped into one of those chairs. You know the chair that? thing. And they were bringing him oh, down the spiral yeah. staircase. I was at the bottom and the, t- the lads were going, you're some fucking prick, Paddy. They're going, did you build this? Are you trying to kill us as well? Holy fuck. Who builds a start for Chris? Anyway, got him in, into the ambulance and all, and then it was, uh, you know, off he went. And I'd never experienced uh, a, a major instance in my family anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Mom, dad. Me, me granny and granddad died when I was very young. Yeah. And the only thing I remember about that was um, getting on a tray and sliding down the stairs with your cousins. <laughs> we didn't fucking, we were too young to be yeah, sad. Yeah. And we didn't know our granddads like we yes. do now. Yeah. Like our children now, they're very close to their granddads and their grannies because yes. they mind them all the time. We live yeah. near them. But in those days, your, your granddad was just this relic of a yoke. You'd you know see what I mean? it about Christmas, my, maybe. Yeah, and they live in a fingless. My yeah. dad couldn't be fucking arse going over there. <laughs> and the reason why my dad moved to Ballant here anyway is because he, he says all my sisters live in fingless and they'll only be fucking knocking into me every day. <laughs> and that's why he went out there. And my poor nan and grand are out there as well. So, so um, yeah, so, so uh, dad, anyway... Uh, oh, I was, oh God, I just tripped myself up there by saying that. I'm always doing that. Anyway, he was in the hospital. He had the stroke and then he he only lasted like two days then and then he died. But that's the other thing. I know it's mad. And I said this with Des as well, was that, you know, we were delighted that he didn't have to go through the yes. coming home in a wheelchair oh, in shocking. a bed and during COVID yeah. where my ma would have been on her own yeah. with him. Yeah. She wouldn't have known what to do. And everyone was fucking terrified. Yeah. You know. Nobody getting near anybody. I don't know what the fuck would have happened. That's the way I'd like to go. None yeah. of that fucking bollocks dribbling. But that's what my dad would have said. The stairs and that's the way I'd want yeah. to go. Because my dad was, that's why I'm saying he's a jammy fucker. I says, yeah. dad, you can't keep smoking and drinking whiskey. You have a pacemaker. Hmm. And he goes, sure, I'll just drop dead. Yeah. And he kind of did the jammy fuck, right? Yeah. And so, so that's what I'm saying. He kind of got away with that. But one phrase I'll always say is even people that do have victims at home that are stroke victims yeah. you know I still envy them a, a little bit yeah because you'd kind of like your dad you don't want your dad to be dead no no. I wouldn't mind if he was still in a, in a bed and he could kind of hear me do you yeah. know what I mean yeah. but he would have hated it do you know what I mean like my my father-in-law uh, he died as well Eddie of cancer and that was a terrible hor- horrible long battle for him but his dad had a stroke and he survived for a couple of years right. but he just hated Surviving because yeah, yeah. he was in a nappy, he had to be held out of bed. <coughs> I'd be like, Bring me to Switzerland. Oh, he was literally that's Zurich. what he was like. He was like, I don't want to live goodness. like this. He kept yeah, saying, He was, and you know what it was? He's such a beautiful man. He didn't want other people, he didn't want to yes. be burden on yeah. other people. Yeah, so my dad would have been like that. Yes, so it's it's grand, like, and away he went. And then my mom, of course, then the COVID kicked in. My mom was on her own then. Yeah. He'd come into windows and waving at her, make sure she was all right. That's quite a shock mm. to a fat, to, to a woman who's been with a man for that many years. Yeah. And he's gone, but she's not sure if he's gone. Because she said she kept waking up in the morning because they slept in two different rooms. Mm. She thought she'd hear him. And she was going, oh, oh no, geez, he's gone. Yeah. But it is, it's hard, you know. But there's, but it's, I mean, that's me again. Mm. You know, trying to keep something like, it's horrific when someone dies like that. But there's me thinking, okay, where's the where's the the positives in it? Yeah, he didn't go through the shit. Yeah. he didn't have to grow fucking old. No, like really old. He yeah. got to eighty. Yeah. He smoked and drank. He did all this fucking thing up to the pub. Yeah. When I went up to the pub, by the way, for the wake, the the outlets at the bar were more upset than we were. <laughs> they were all fucking looking at their points, going, "I can't fucking believe it's Paddy Bourne of all the people." Yeah. Fucking pa- they're only crying <laughs> because they're more attached to each other than they are to their own wives. Yeah, because they see each other so much. Yeah, my dad's drinking, but he died, and you think me fucking mad died, <laughs> right? <laughs> it was like, oh, da, dad's still there, and he's going, oh yeah, your mother's there, yeah, yeah, okay. But it so they're yeah, they're very connected like that. But moving on now with me, mom, she's had a new lease of life because me sisters moved in with her two kids now. They, they live together, and they're like they're like two sisters. Deadly. Me mom gets on really well with them. Deadly. So she's had a new kind of lease of life and we constantly remind her about that because they always say if you don't talk about someone who's died they die, they die twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should yeah. always yeah, no, 100%. keep shit and chatting and, 100%. and you don't have to do it all day. Yeah, because there's a there's an amazing fella, Alan Watts. Do you know, what, well, Alan Alan Watts, he's a like philosopher. He's dead. Okay. He's grey crack. Yeah. So he he died in 1973 or something. But he's one of these lovely talkers yeah. who like he can talk about n. Just yeah, yeah. Google Alan Watts YouTube. Right. Pick n depression, money, flowers, flower. <laughs> he's talking about it. Yeah, yeah. But he did say that, you know, when someone dies, uh, it's just too exhausting. 
to keep grieving about them. Yes. He goes, don't be grieving every day, every day. It's exhausting. He says, do your grieving and then maybe like like a, like a good book, put them away for a little bit yeah. and then bring them back out again and then go, oh yeah, do you remember that? So that's what we do with my ma yeah. to keep her happy. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. remember when dad did that? And even when we're watching the telly, you're going, oh, dad fucking hated that. He didn't like that. And you know what I mean? And it's an endless conversation with my dad. My favourite story about your dad is the priest sitting in his chair. <laughs> like any family. There. But any other family, mm. the priest is in there, bring him in a brandy. <laughs> He's in my chair. <laughs> you, so, I'm not going to ruin it. No, you tell don't. that story. No, no. It was Father Murta. Because I was an altar boy for Father Murta. I remember him well, so I knew him. So when he came in, he was like, how are you, Jason? I was like, oh, how are you, Father? Like, you know, he's like, oh, like that would have no bother. Me ma came in and she, was, she had, she made him the sandwich. Because that's what he did. He went into all the houses for his sandwiches and his whiskey. Yeah. And there he is with the whiskey and the sandwiches. And my dad walks in. I remember he was in his boiler suit because he was working in the gas works in uh, Guinness's then. He comes in. And me dad, my dad was opening the door. And I was sitting in the living room with the priest. Me ma, and me dad goes, first off, straight away, who the fuck is he? Like this, right? And me ma goes, because he's obviously had points on him, dad. Because dad had points in work, went to the pub before he came home. And then he came home. And so there's Father Murder. He goes, oh, I'm Father Murder. And me dad goes, oh no, me mom goes, that's Father Murta. And my dad goes, I couldn't give a fuck who he is. Get him out of my chair. So he actually doesn't even talk to him. And Father Murta stood up with sandwiches on a plate and a whiskey. And my dad stood there just staring at him. Didn't even say anything to him. As he walked out and my dad sat down in the chair and he was looking at me going, fucking priest. And Proper then old school. my ma didn't speak to him for like three weeks. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And he was just, you'd go, what's that with you? She's going, I can't believe you made a show of you. Show me. <laughs> but he was always making a show of everyone. That's what, That was me dad. Say. I'm a bit like that as well. I think it's funny like that. Like not to we give We need a fuck. more people like that. It's like, you know, oh, that's blah, blah, blah. So yeah. fucking what? Get the fuck out of the way. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to fuck you, yeah. yeah I'm going to fuck you. It's well, like, Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ. I don't care who you are. Get the oh, fuck. Oh, listen, I did. We the, need more people like that. Yeah, I did the eulogy at <clears> my dad's funeral because I had to. Because the priest didn't have a fucking clue who he was. <laughs> and and as well as that, um, we had to go. We had to, you know, you have to meet the priest, right? In, in the in the church before, like a couple of days beforehand to talk about the mass. Oh, man, we were, me and my sisters and me man and I were trying not to burst out laughing. The first question was, so would Paddy, would he have gone to mass, right? <laughs> and we're all up, my ma's going, shut up. And my ma looks and she goes, well, well, he, well, well, in, well at, the, at the beginning he did, at the beginning. And we're going to her ma, at the beginning of what? At the be what? When he was christened. Right? And the priest is like, oh, I see, I see. And then the brilliant one was, so would he be involved with the community and the GAA clubs? And we were there going, he went, I hear. I said, I said, he used to call fellas that went to watch their, fe their children Play L ones. <laughs> he got, I got, he got to go and watch his son playing football. Nah, it's full of fucking L ones. Full of L ones with no brass. And we go, Dad, that's no, you can't be doing that. So, and actually, another classic one was when the pub opened up in Ballantyre, right? In the, in the late 60s or 70s, whatever it was. My dad all just moved in. He knocked into loads of all the outfits in the houses who had just moved in. And whoever went with him, he was friends with for the rest of his, of his life there. And whoever didn't, he never spoke to ever again, <laughs> like ever again. And he said, he goes, someone of fucking, you want to hear this, right? I knock in. And I go, the pub's open. There's going to be given a free point. And some of these fucking L ones, he's talking about uh, men, by the way. <laughs> some of these fucking L ones look at me going, nah, sorry, I'll have to help the missus unpack. Well, you're going to fuck <laughs> off. And that was, <laughs> that was it. And all his mates were just these mad alcoholics. <laughs> he was going, oh, great, da, brilliant. Scholars, aren't they? Oh, okay. Geniuses. So he was, he's a great man. And, He's given me my humour as well. Yeah. And me mum has as well. Yeah. So I, I don't go full on dad humour. Mm. And if I want to say something that's a little bit, you know, off the scale, a little bit non-PC, I blame me dad. Yeah. I just use me dad's voice. Gift. Which is great crack. So like it, it's been insane. Like the whole, I don't know what's been really weird is the, the taking what I've been doing for granted. So you know I mean, so going to Edinburgh, right? Yes. And spending all that time in that city going to Dubai, going to Australia, walking onto Bondi Beach and then maybe, and then shuffling off to do my gig that night in the centre of Sydney and then coming back again. Then flying business class all the way back home. Yeah. Loving it, right? Yeah. Fucking pressing the ding ding all day. Going, what would you have? Ding, don't care what's left. Give us a, yeah. right? Because that was part of the festival yeah, deal. Yeah. 
like gigging in Germany, gigging in like uh, in in Paris and all these things, and then the and Finland, you know what I mean? Gigging yeah. in Finland was like all the all the different places and all the friends we've had, and it's like someone just shut it all down. Do you know what I mean? I know we can stay in touch on on the Insta and all but that. It's not the same. No, but then you, of course, which I'm going to bring in definitely was because I asked John, I was going to Finland because I I. I talk about the okay. If you had to retire anywhere in the world or go and live straight away, if you all had to choose Finland, Finland, go I'd to Finland, there. go to Finland. It is brilliant crack because we go, isn't that shy? They're so funny, they're amazing drinkers. They have great crack in the winter, they have even better fun in the summer. Yeah. They're all and they're so nice to each other. It's such a beautiful country, yeah. Like, I can only think of like when we went there. It's a funny story because you're like, I know the Finland and uh, <laughs> do you want to go to Finland? I was kind of like, I remember Yvonne, I, <clears throat> I did this thing called, it was like a weekend away, it's called the Hero's Journey and it just changed me philosophy on things. Was that when you went to the camp and yes, in the forest? in the forest and found myself yeah. and sage and fucking, yeah. anyway, it was like, whenever you're asked to do things, no matter how off the wall they are, just yeah. go, yeah. Fucking so, yeah. So Jay is like, uh, just say you're my uh, cameraman. I don't something. know why you're making it up, yeah. Just say you're my cameraman. So it's like... Well, you see, I knew they'd love you after they <laughs> met you after about four hours. Because they just... He'd be... You, yeah, I know you're standing over there. Sorry, I know I'm talking to nobody. But you became more popular than I did with the lads ago. They kept going, where is John? I was going, I'm here as well, you know. I remember in Helsinki going, oh, fuck, I've no camera. <laughs> 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 no camera. John's a cameraman. Yeah, no camera. The thing was that I... Uh, what I uh,